internet hi bosen here we're back again this week with the uh sun hokey perusa i3 i'll learn english in a second and uh basically continuing from where we left off last week about test prints and what have you but i quickly want to go over a couple of little bits to do with the build parts of this basically one little thing in particular earlier on when i was using this and the bed went to go back to hit the stop switch on the y-axis the cable that comes out the back of this bed here actually pushed these horrid end stop over and obviously the bed carried on i didn't really notice this and i wondered why the bed would seem to be the object was printing so much nearer to the front that was why so you really do have to keep your eye out on this also when it done that i think it pushed on it quite a bit before it managed to do anything and this rod here actually almost slid all the way out i was told by somebody that these little black c clips here if i can show you one on this camera here one of these little c clips here well these ones here were what they're designed to do is to actually go on if we focus onto that uh, design use them on this to kind of like push and ah and then they're supposed to help it stop it moving or sliding back and forward it's just to give a little extra resistance now they did supply 12 of these and you do have six rods so you can either put them at one at like each end or as I'm doing on this bit here, I've put one on there and I'm going to put one on the outer end here. I put them both on the same end here just because it's easier for me to get to. Uh, later on when I do fit the rest of these, I'm not going to do it now. Um, you've just seen that one. I don't think they're doing a brilliant job, but to be honest, we all know this isn't the world's best put together kind of printer, especially when I've done it. Anyway also i thought i'd quickly go over just to let you guys know roughly how many bits i still have left over now what we have here is i have oh let's see good about 15 maybe or so give or take m3 by eight millimeters five m3 by 10 millimeters one m3 by 12 millimeter 15 20 or so m3 by 16 millimeters one m3 by 18 millimeter about 10 to 15 m3 nuts two m4 by 12 mil bolts a couple of m4 washers and a couple of m5 nuts that's it that's all i really have left over so if that's roughly the amount you've got left over as well then hopefully we both haven't screwed up somewhere okay so now let's get back on to the printing side of things i have now been doing some test prints in fact i've been doing a few test prints as you can see here one two three four five six seven eight prints now these have all been done with varying different things like flow rates uh mainly all on 0.2 mil <coughs> excuse me layer height so that's pretty uniform i did do uh one at 0.1 but that yeah, was only a very small one i just wanted to see what the difference would be between the 0.2 and the 0.1 on this it was only on a cube so it wasn't really going to show a great deal off the first one i did was this little puppy here so we've got this guy here now this one here i can't remember the exact settings but i'm pretty sure it was i think 210 uh i then at the beginning ramped the flow rate up to like 400 i i know i know i know what you're thinking now silly me but hey i got to experiment but apart from that off i went i can't remember all the exact settings for these i'll tell you that now because i was an idiot and i didn't really write them down as i go along this one here it was started off a bit bad and this was on a flow rate of 400 initially and then i realized how this was really starting you can see there going really wrong and what have you so i slowed it down to about 200 for the what was left of this and that was a lot better but i realized when i looked at it if you look at it there it's very deformed it's not very square it's very mushy but it gave me a good idea of where i was going 
So once I completed that one, I then moved on to this one here. Now this one, I slowed it down to, if I remember rightly, 150. And that's when things started to obviously look a lot better. And as you can see, this actually looks like a cube. Now it still does have some distortion at the corner edges. I don't know if you can see it at that angle there, but they kind of bulge out. It kind of goes long bulge. Let's get this here. They kind of go a long bulge out and round. It's very hard to see on the camera, but in person, it's one of those things you can see. And I still think I then had the flow rate a little too high, but I think I was getting there and I was very, very, very happy with that printout. So after that, I thought, well, let's kind of uh, save myself a little bit of time. And I halved the size of the cube from a 20 mil down into a little 10 mil. Because uh, a couple of other people that I've said stuff in comments and what have you, uh, and people that have emailed me and contacted me through other means, um, had done theirs in a 10 mil square. So I thought, let's give 10 mil squares a go. And this little baby here, uh, as you can see, came out quite nice. Now, the only thing it didn't do was complete the top. It did leave a little hole in the top there. Um, but apart from that, it was cube shaped. It was quite nice. After that, um, because sometimes when I was starting there having a little issue, I thought I'd try it with a brim. Uh, on the support material, not support, um, what's it called? Platform adhesion type. I put brim on, which was this here, and you then got this little kind of, um, let's get in the center, this little puppy there. Looks like I've drawn a face on it. That was me just marking a few things, but did um, end up looking like a little face. But So again, it was quite all right, but again, on the top, left the hole at the thing now this brim stuff i haven't tried breaking it off yet i was going to wait until you were recording on for you and then you can just literally there we go pull that off and there we go and it's really actually a very nice base from that so i'm quite 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 like that one uh for my fifth print i was feeling a bit cocky at that point so i thought time to try another little robot beard buddy i done one of these and he was going all right at first and everything was going golden but unfortunately um for some reason the side of his face him kind of melted now i wasn't here when it was printing because i started this off went for dinner like i said i was feeling a bit cocky my little mate here looks like he's been shot in the face with a laser lasered well that's what you do with robots isn't it shoot them in the face with lasers come on laser face beard buddy here came out now as you can see from the one last week this is uh last week's little uh beard buddy actually the one from last week is looking a little bit better um i'm i'm getting there so he's got an even bigger horn than the other guy then I did um, another one of these little boxes. I just wanted to make sure I was going right. But yet again, end up with a hole in the top. So I know I have to put the upper and lower shells thicker now. Because of the fill, fill percentage being at 20% infill on all of these, it's the same on all of them. Where it does the infill, it kind of leaves a hole in the center. So I think the material's just not bridging very well. But as I was quite happy with that, the next one I did was a 0.01 uh, layer. So the idea here is I wanted to really see if you could see the differences and let's see if you can get it in the light there. And, and you can kind of tell hopefully in the light there how much finer those lines are. But at the end of the day it didn't really make a great deal of difference i suppose on something like the cube i think if you're doing something like the robot buddy and what have you obviously the 0.01 is going to make a lot more difference to all the detail but when you've got something that's just a square it's probably not going to make a great deal of difference to you i thought let's go a bit bigger this time and i went for a 30 millimeter square and this one came out really nice because for this one 
most of all these others you've seen have been running going at a flow rate 125 maybe 115 i think on one of them this one i decided i was going to go for just a flow rate of 100 go for what it's supposed to be but the thing i have found out and done with these is whereas it was initially set up on cura to do the skirt which was only like two two run rounds before printing it i turned that up to six because the problem i was having mainly with a lot of my prints on the start was um it wasn't actually running when it, it was starting to print the object it took a while for some reason for the uh, filament to start flowing so by having that extra skirt and having that extra bit of thing by the time it drawn around that six times it was flowing good and then it was ready to go and ready to rumble and you can see how nice the base is on that as well that's nice and sharp all the layers now you can see on the edge of the layers here where the infill meets the thing that is even a pronounced little gray section in all the corners and you can see the tops thin and there are bits there if you look it's very hard to see on this camera in this light um where the top isn't that thick so I still do need to tweak a few settings on that. You might notice the state of this bed is looking quite white and crusty. Now, one thing that somebody uh, said to me and pointed out is something that they use to help thing. I've been trying using hairspray. Extra strength hold, maximum hold hairspray. Because I was told hairspray was a good thing for it. Now, that wasn't working for me at the beginning. Now, whether or not it was the hairspray's fault or whether it was just that I needed to do that extra skirt to help really lay down some filament bef to, before it grabbed, I don't know. But, but because at the beginning this didn't seem to be working, I moved on to basically, uh, this is a boss stick quick stick, prit stick, glue stick, standard kind of, the lid stuck on. Ah on one of those kind of gooey things you can just rub it on that's what i put on the base and that's been actually really quite good yeah it does make a mess of the glass but the idea is it gives you a rough surface for the filament to grab onto i'm getting there i still have to do some calibrations because this is supposed to be that's supposed to be 30 20 and 10. now when i measure these they're slightly over they are slightly over the sizes 0.3.4 kind of mil on the x and the y the z is where i've got to really calibrate it in it's uh that's good millimeter over i also still have to calibrate the extruder so this being the final piece and obviously the nicest looking piece i'll tell you what settings i used on this piece here and what i used there was it was 0.2 millimeter layer height shell thickness of one millimeter with a top and bottom layer thickness of one millimeter print speed of 15 millimeters per second print head temperature of 195 degrees celsius bed temperature of 50 degrees celsius platform adhesion type was skirt with line count of six start distance i put nine mil just to give me a bit of distance uh, obviously diameter for the filament on this is 1.75 and a flow rate of 100 in the advanced settings because i'm using cura here uh, i had nozzle size 0.5 i don't know if that's 100 percent correct but it's why we used for this i might try 0.4 next time i don't know we'll see how it goes with a retraction speed of 40 millimeters per second distance it says 4.5 millimeters uh, initial layer thickness 0.3 millimeters initial layer line percentage 100 to be honest the rest is all pretty much how it comes they're the settings i used on cura uh, i'm using at the moment a uh, cura version which one is this well it's the latest one because i only just downloaded it today so it's the latest one anyway so that's what that is Well, I hope you like that. My little robot beer buddies definitely did because they're growing in numbers. Um, if you've got any other ideas for methods of bed adhesion, like blue paint and tape, I know that's a, a common one. Uh, you've also, if you know any good calibration pieces that I can try and, uh, you know, any little techniques you know about calibrating the XYZ axis to get the proper steps per millimetre, etc. 
I'd love to hear them. Please hit me up, up in the comments below or also get me at Hybosan on Twitter. If you did like this, please like, subscribe, do all those wonderful, lovely youtube -y things that people love. Um, and what I'll do is I will catch you again next week. See you then. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.